Hi, welcome to lecture five, uh, which we will discuss the transient response for uh, CMOS circuit. And uh, in this uh, uh, lecture, what we will do, we will uh, have a um, variable input uh, that uh, is applied to a circuit, and we want to uh, understand the behavior of the output uh, for the circuit. Now, uh, typically, what we would like to do is for any circuit, we would uh, we would like to understand the uh, delay of the circuit. And if I may use the whiteboard a little bit here, um, so here is here is uh, an inverter circuit, and we do apply a. a, a this is the input, and this is the output here, okay? And the input is time varying, and the output is time varying. So typically, uh, if we have this uh, voltage per time uh, diagram, so uh, the input voltage will look like something like this, okay? And the output voltage will look like something like this. Okay, so this is the V out and this is the V in. In this, in this type of environment for where the input and output changes, we would want to understand what is the delay of the circuit. What do we mean delay? Delay, it means, if I look at VDD over 2, so you see the maximum value for these signals is VDD. If I look at VDD over 2, at what time the input has changed and at what time the output has changed. And we will call this the delay, okay? Similarly here, at what time the input has changed and at uh, 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 and, and what time the output has changed. This is, you can see that this is the delay in time, okay? This is, this is important because it determines the speed of the circuit, okay? So this is the delay in time. Also, what we would like to understand is how quickly a signal rises and falls. So for example, uh, we can have the signal, for instance, uh, um, um, if, I, if I draw uh, the axis again, okay, so let's have another, another, another V plus T, okay. And let's see if we, we have a signal that can rise something like this, okay, or something like this, or something like this, or something sharp like this. So this is a sharp rising signal. This is a slow rising signal. So we would like to understand the length in time, the length in time a signal rises, okay? So this signal takes that much to rise. This signal, on the other hand, takes this much. So we say that this is a slow rising signal. This is a fast rising signal. And, and that measurement of rising, and also it goes for falling, is, is very important for the circuits which are in transient. So, so, so uh, 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 in other words, in this chapter, we will discuss the issues that, are, that arise from the changing of input voltage and it will impact the output voltage in terms of the delay and in terms of the rising and the falling of the output voltage. Okay, let's go back now to the definition and un understand with this, with, this the, uh, with this explanation the definition. So, so here, the delay definition, when we say rising propagation delay, so this is the delay, right? Rising propagation delay means, okay, it means the, the time, okay, the rising from the input to the rising of the output. So you can see here, <clears throat> he is using 
the input voltage in a separate diagram and the output voltage in a separate diagram. I wish they, they didn't do that. I wish they have the input and the output on the same plot, but that's fine. So now you can see that the VDD value here is one volt and the VDD over two is 0.5 volt. Now, what time the input changes at this time? What time the VDD of the output of over two, it is at this time. This is the difference. We call this propagation delay. Let's understand. This is propagation delay. Now, what's the R here? Well, the R describes the R describes the the rise and the fall of the output. So, for instance, here when the input changes and the output changes at this point. The output at this point is doing what? It is rising. That's why I say this is propagation delay. While the output is rising, it is going from low voltage to high voltage. But this propagation delay, on the other hand, the output is doing what? It is falling. So this is the propagation delay while the output is falling, and this is the propagation delay while the output is rising. We can talk about the propagation delay in terms of average propagation delay so what we do we add this number and this number and divide by two okay okay also we can talk about the rise time and the fall time of the output or, or any signal the rise time and the fall time what we do we measure the time the for the rise from the from the uh, time that the the the, the signal uh, 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 crosses 20 percentile of its value to 80 percentile of its value. The difference in time, we call this uh, rise time. Some textbooks use 10 percent to 90 percent. Your textbook here use from 20 percent to 80 percent. Similarly, when the output crosses the, 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 the mark of 80 percentile to 20 percentile, that difference in time is the fall time. Okay, this is the fall time. Now, Typically, signals, they have some, some kind of a range of for normal rise and fall time. If, beca if they become too quick in rising or falling or too slow in rising and falling, that might be indication uh, 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 there are problems in your circuit. Okay, so these are the de delay definition and rise and fall definition, which, which, is, which is key to transient analysis okay all right so key for our transient analysis typically we would like to minimize the delay typically we would like to have a uh, reasonable fast and, and and rise time and it's good to have them equal in other words you don't want to have a slow fall and a fast rise you would want to have the two of them almost equal to each other okay now, here he talks about the contamination delay, which means the fastest delay. We're not going to address this a lot in, in our course, but we will, we, will, we will just point to it. It is used for minimum delay for circuits, and this is typically important for whole time checks, which we will do very little in this level of, of this course. Okay? Now, um, in simulation, uh, uh, these are the result of simulation like SPICE or uh, any other uh, circuit simulator. And you can see that this is the input voltage uh, and this is the output voltage here. And you can uh, see that how the, we measure this delay here, okay, in, in terms of, uh, so this is the delay while the output is falling. This is the delay while the output is rising, okay. Now, the if we want to understand the circuit analysis and what happens in in this chapter what we will do is that we'll try to estimate the delay using threes and let's go to the whiteboard here and and um, okay so we would like to estimate the delay using three methods so we would like to estimate the delay using three methods one method is using circuit analysis. And we will 
find very quickly that is this is so complicated. I mean, you can do it, but it, it really inv it, for for very simple circuits, it, it take lots of effort. And, and, and we will see that we are going to try to simplify things using RC models, which is good for one to uh, two gates, right? But not more. What about if you have 10 gates, 20 gates? Well, that's when we were going to use the logical effort, okay? Right. So, so we are now uh, are going to address this, and then move quickly to this, and then finally at the end of the chapter we'll look at the uh, logical effort. Now, what we are doing from one method to another, what we are doing, we are doing. Uh, let's see. This direction, we are doing uh, simplification. So we go with the simplification in this direction. And of course, of course, of course, needless to say, uh, uh, in terms of accuracy, that we go that way, accuracy. Okay, so the accuracy, oh, I'm not uh, sure I've written that the right way, accuracy, okay, we go that way. So these are typically accurate, the, the circuit analysis, the semi. Uh, and 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 then and then uh, so so the logical effort is is less accurate, but it allows me to do a lot of uh, uh, estimation very quickly. Of course, uh, what what is not mentioned here is uh, H spice and and the like spice circuits. Of course, this is this is this gives you golden results, but again, uh, even spice has limitation when you have large circuits and you can spice everything because it is slow, okay? But in this chapter, we will address these three methods, circuit analysis, RC, and logical effort. Okay, let's, so let's go to, 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 to this here. Okay, so here, what we are assuming that we, we have, um, here we assume that we have uh, 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 this circuit where um, at T, let's see if I, if I can draw this uh, 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 VT, Vt, okay. So this is this is t uh, uh, voltage, and this is time. And of course, what happens is that we are saying that um, uh, we are saying that the input voltage here, the input voltage does that. So this is the input voltage comes and at t. So this is Vt. Uh, I'm sorry, this is Vn. Okay, all right. So that's that's what we indicating here. Um, okay. Um, one thing though. Okay, I should I should mention, yeah, he's using T zero. Let's let's uh, use the, the, the same notation they are using. Okay. Okay. So so uh, we'll, I'm, I'll try to use the, the same same notation as they are using. So basically, we have instead of zero, we'll use T zero. So this is T zero. Okay. Now, so uh, so this is this is V n. Now, what 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 I expect to happen, okay? Um, since since the output voltage is um, uh, uh, since, since the output voltage uh, uh, of the input is rising, what I expect is that the um, the voltage of the output, since the input voltage is, ri is rising at T0, what I expect the output voltage is does does like this. So, so let's choose a another color. So this is this is the output voltage. It does something like so. This is V out. Okay, all right. And of course, what I'm interesting here. So these are VDD, VDD over two. I am interested to know the delay, and I just defined the delay, which is uh, the difference in time between here to here, and the, where this is this is VDD or two. So that's my delay here. That's my delay in time. Okay. Now, how can I do this? Well, uh, I know that this uh, uh, the, the, the the V out uh, uh, less than zero. Okay. So let's uh, choose another color here. Uh, 
So the V out uh, less than T0 is VDD. This is, I'm showing it right here. So this, this, is, this is the V out here is before zero VDD. Now after V in arrives and uh, what happened before T0, before T0, the, this was on and this was off. But once we cross T0, right, why on and off? Because, because the input voltage was zero here and the, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, uh, was, was uh, 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 yeah, zero here and zero here and that turned on the PMOS and turned off the NMOS. Then after T0, I have here VDD and here VDD. And therefore, this becomes off after T0, and this becomes on the, the NMOS. Now you can see I have a current that I can discharge the capacitor through the NMOS. Okay. Now the the, the current the current that is that is the, uh, 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 going to discharge the capacitor is IDSN. It is the the current through drain to source of the NMOS. And this is at the same time is the current which is going to discharge the capacitor. And I know the, the current that discharges the capacitor, uh, I C. Oops, sorry. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see if I can erase this. Okay. Um, uh, I C T equals. C times B, B, C over D, T. Okay. And now I can equate this current with the current that goes through the transistor and I can come up with this equation. DV, uh, uh, DV out, which is equal like uh, DVC, which is on the capacitor. So this is the D, C at time. Okay. Uh, and uh, DV out over D, T equals minus the current uh, that goes through the uh, the in-mass transistor because of the direction the, the, the minus sign over C uh, over C load. Okay, so this is the C is right here the C load. Okay, so uh, now I can estimate uh, 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 clearly this dB out over dT equals ISDN over over C load, and I, obviously I can integrate this with the uh, 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 differential equation. But it's important that I understand what is this equation, what is the value for the current. And I know that before T0, it is T0, uh, zero, zero current, because the, the, the inmost transistor was off. Once the inmost transistor is turned on, it, it goes through two regions, saturation and linear. And we know the current the equation for the saturation is as such, and the current equation through the linear region is as such. And, and this gets complicated. This is really get, getting complicated because of uh, 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 I have to apply the saturation current as long as the V out is greater than VDD minus VT and the linear equation as long as VDD minus uh, VT. This is going to get quickly very complex. Okay. Uh, and, and, and this is just one device that I'm using here. What about if I use two devices? three devices, four gates. So everybody realizes that this method of, 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 of circuit analysis um, and, and, and using differential equations might not be uh, uh, very efficient in solving large circuits. Okay. Now, what we will do, uh, we'll try to simplify using RC uh, uh, analysis, RC circuits, and basically what we will try to do is uh, we'll try to replace the transistors with an RC circuits, and this is what we will uh, discuss in the next lecture. But before we go there, it's important that we indicate, if I, mo if I may go to, if, if, if it's important to indicate that in a simple RC circuit where I have here a resistor and a capacitor, and from, from circuit one or circuit two, when you studied this circuit, we, you, you have there derived the, the V out uh, equation, which is uh, 
uh, the out uh, uh, in time, which is which is basically uh, the discharge of this capacitor. And you can see how the, the curve behaves. So this this is the value of V out, all right. And 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 since we are interested in time, what is the delay in time between uh, the the start of the discharging of the output and V D D over two? So we, we are interested for this point V this V D D over two. So we would like to know what is the length in time. If you solve this equation, you will see that the length in time here is equal R C lin two. RC lin 2, where, where RC really uh, is the, 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 the value of the resistance, the value of the capacitance. L natural logarithm of 2, which is, can be estimated as 0.69. Okay, uh, and typically people, will, for, simpli uh, simpli uh, for sim sim uh, simplicity, they will just say RC, knowing that there is a lin uh, log uh, 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 natural logarithm of 2. Okay, um, uh, not not to uh, underestimate the value of this one. So so if you have a an RC circuit and you are discharging it, you know that your delay for this circuit, meaning the time for the output capacitor to discharge all the way to half of its value, equal RC lin two natural logarithm of of uh, of number two. Okay, which is estimated to be 0.69. And that's good. So if I somehow can simplify my circuit to be an RC circuit, somehow remove the transistors, I can utilize this simplification. And this will be the topic of the next uh, uh, part of this lecture. And thank you very much.